Hello once again, it's Joe the CRM chap here with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. Uh, this is the exam targeting developers looking to build solutions on top of Dynamics 365 Online or the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a something called Custom Connectors. So if you are building uh, Canvas Power Apps, Power Automate Flows, there may be situations where you want to start to incorporate your own internal systems, your own APIs um, within your particular solution. It could be as well that maybe you're an ISV, you want to basically offer out your um, solution as a connector within um, you know, Power Automate and the, the tools that we spoke about already. Um, so all of these scenarios can be met by building a custom connector. Um, so what we're going to do in today's video, we're going to take, uh, we're going to build out a very simple connector that's going to be leveraging some, um, some of the capabilities of in Microsoft Azure. So and we'll show you from start to finish in terms of how you build that out and then test that using Power to Make Flow. So first things first, we need to win our a solution that we've been building out so far in the series, our MB400 solution, um, and we just want to click on New at the top up here. We're going to go to Other, and we're going to click on Custom Connector. So this basically opens up a, a little sort of wizard screen down here um, that we can start to build out. So we're going to call this our MB400 uh, sample as our custom connector. Uh, and there's a, there's a load of detail, first of all, that we need to give it. Um, now, I mentioned already we're going to be using an existing Azure solution as part of this. Specifically, we're going to be using um, Azure Cognitive Services uh, uh, to help speed us along here. Um, so Cognitive Services provides a range of different um, uh, AI based solutions that can help you automate a lot of uh, key tasks so whether it's sort of image detection uh, being able to uh, you know detect sentiment in, in text uh, you know detect and remove profanity there's a whole bunch of services within cognitive services uh, that can help you to meet these objectives uh, the one that we're going to be homing in and using today is the translate API so this is where we can pass it you know, text from any different language, language, and get back fully translated text within seconds for that particular, uh, for that particular, you know, to meet any particular need that we want. So we've already created the resource down here. Um, if you wanted to create this from scratch, what we would do is we go to add at the top up here. Uh, we type in translate at the top. Uh, we'll get the first solution back, uh, which will be our translator down here. Click onto that and then create. And then from there, we just give it a few details, region, name, pricing tier. Uh, you can generally select the free one. You get quite a generous amount of um, usage as part of that. Um, and then we click review and create and then go from there. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that today. We've already got the resource ready to go. So if we click on it over here, we can see we get a quick start page down here. And then, and then further down here, we get details about our specific endpoint and the, deta and the initial details that we need to start building out our custom connector. So if we grab that first of all, our endpoint, we jump it back across into Power to Make Flow. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about our logo or icon background colour today. Uh, we'll call this just sort of MB400 uh, sample down here. We're connecting across the open internet, so we don't need to go on premise or use a data gateway as part of this. Um, uh, we're connecting over HTTPS, that's all good. So we click onto here, co copy and paste what we've got from Azure over here, remove the initial HTTPS bit down here and leave the base URL bit all, uh, all empty, and then we're good to go to the next stage. Uh, so this is where we specify, okay, how do we authenticate into our particular API? How it works with Cognitive Services is that it's an API key that you can use. Um, so we're just gonna um, specify the details for that here. Uh, so it's gonna be called, we're gonna get the label of API key. Uh, the parameter name, we're gonna match it to what um, is expected um, when calling the service via other mechanisms. Uh, and it's passed through as part of the header, so we can just sort of leave that as we as we wanted to down there. And then click on definition to go to the next stage. So here we can start basically to tell um, tell the application to us, okay, what can our API do? What actions can people call? What triggers uh, can we potentially use as part of it? Um, you know, policies that we need to apply, a whole bunch of stuff that we can do. Um, so for our example today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calling two specific actions from the cognitive services. The first one being the translate, where we can basically feed it any text, any language, and it will go off and translate into our chosen language. Um, and the second one will be our detect, where it goes off and based on what we submit it, it tells us, okay, what language is coming back as part of this. Um, so first of all, we just click on new action up here. Uh, so we'll start building this out, our initial one. So we'll call this one translate down here give it a few details. When we're building up our request for the first time, um, we 
can import from a sample. Now, when it comes to trying to determine, okay, what settings we need to you know, put on here, for example, uh, we can use a very handy tool called Postman to sort of help us along as part of that. Um, it really is a, a very useful tool when you're testing any sort of web request whatsoever. Um, so as we can see on here, uh, we've got a few sample requests that we built out on here. And specifically, we've got a Translate API test on here. So this is basically the complete details for the request that we would need to uh, submit in order to call the API and return our translated text. Um, so we can see it's got a body, we've added a few header details, authorization has been set, and then if we press the send button up here, uh, we can see we get a result back based on what, we, what the body text has been submitted over here. So we can use this to basically help build out our request a little bit further. So I'll move this across to the other screen now and we can start to basically build things out based on what we've got in Postman. So it's a post request that we want to fire off. Uh, we give it the full uh, URL over there. Uh, there's a few headings that we need to, or header values that we need to give. So subscription region, we need to tell it first of all. So that'll be West Europe. Uh, content type will be uh, application JSON uh, and it will be a char set of UTF-8. Um, then at this point then we can then copy in our body uh, which will be the text that we want to translate we click import at this point and then we can see it's built out the entire request all the values that we need um, and at this point um, there'll be some additional tweaks we need to make to that but we'll come back to that in a few minutes uh, because next we just want to basically just build out okay tell um, power to make sure okay what is our response look like what information does it contain and how can it be sort of passed in an easy way. Um, so again, all we need to do on here is just give it a few different header values. So specifically XMT system, uh, which we set to Microsoft based on what Postman is telling us. And then X request ID. Oh, uh, wrong place there. And then we just copy and paste in the response that we got back from Postman a few seconds ago and click import. Um, so we'll need to go into there again just to make a few tweaks but at this point we're going to return back to our request and as I mentioned there's just a few little settings that we need to tweak to make sure that things work as we want them to. So first of all we need to make some changes to our API version over here. Um, this is always going to be 3.0 is always the value that it sort of, sort of expects so we want to make sure that that's always supplied on there and in addition we don't want to have users entering this each time we just want the custom cats to handle it for us. So in which case we just click on the required radio button down there, set it as an internal property, and then that all sorts it for us. In addition, we need to also change it as well. Um, if we keep, keep it as an integer, it will strip out the zero and the dot for us, which is not what we want uh, because it will error otherwise. Um, so we click on string over here, set that like so, and then that's good to go. Uh, next, we need to um, modify our two which will be in our query parameters this is the language that we want to um, translate into. So again, click on edit. And all we want to do on this is just basically just say, yep, we want this as a required field each time. And that's it on that one. Um, next, we can look at our headers down here. Um, so again, on this one, our subscription region, it's always going to be West Europe as the value that we want to supply on here. So again, we just set that as required, set it as internal. The users then don't need to worry about it when they're using this connector in the future. Um, same again for content type, that we always want that to be this, the same value. So we just grab that again from our postman. Uh, so copy and paste that like so. Set it as required, set it as internal, and then we don't need to worry about it any further. Uh, and then finally, body, we want to always have as a required field because otherwise, it's, if we don't have text to translate, then it's just going to fail anyway, it's pretty useless, so set that as required and then we're good to go on that one. Um, and then for default down here, um, we're just going to make a change to the score on here just to prevent a potential error down the line. We want to change this to a number uh, float field because it returns as a decimal number each time. Okay, so at this point I'm just going to save at this particular point uh, or oh, we get an error with our particular parameter uh, let me just have a look at this down here uh, I think it might have something to do with the API version over here yeah I don't think it saved that correctly uh, no we might need to just jump into swagger just to um, so, so 
there may be occasions where you need to tweak things around using the, the base swagger definition um, so when you click the button up here you get the full editor down here and then what we can do in here is we can actually just tweak things a little bit further so in which case I want to just change this to uh, a string value uh, like so if I now do create connector yeah that saves it successfully on there so be prepared sometimes when you're fiddling about with this you might need to jump into swagger just to make, just make some little tweaks because the interface doesn't expose it out yet Okay, so we're going to add on our second action at this particular point. So this will be our detect. So we'll pop detect in there. Again, we're going to call it detect. Uh, similar to before, we're going to pop in the details that it expects each time. Uh, so again, it will be a post request uh, to this specific API. Uh, headers will again just be, um, in this case, it will just be our subscription region that we need to worry about. Uh, and then body will be the text that we want to feed it through. Um, so again, if I just grab the large body of text that we worked with a few seconds ago, again, click on import. Um, once more, we'll add on the default response so that we um, so that we know what so it knows what it's going to be expecting back potentially. Uh, so again, we'll just pop in the body details like so. Um, and then we need to also, I don't think we need to worry about the headers. Uh, oh yeah, we need the request ID on this one as well. Uh, so again, pop that on that, like so, import. Okay, so that should be all fine. Uh, and then again, we just wanna make some very small tweaks on here. We just want to set this as a string. Uh, once again, 3.0, we might need to just tweak this again in our Swagger definition, but let's see if it um, let's see if it handles it for us. Uh, so again, yes, required on this because it's always going to be the same. It's always going to be West Europe for this. Uh, yep, so that should be good. And then body again, we want to just make this as a required field because we always want something to basically detect on there. So let's try and save this now. Okay, right, we get an error, so that's fine. So what we can do is just jump into here. And then we can see down here, we just change this into a string like so. Uh, and then we can just do update connector. Okay, and then we're good to go. So at this point then, our, it, our custom connector is ready to go. Uh, what we can do at this particular point is just run a quick test on it, just to make sure that it all works as we want it to. Um, so we click on the test one up here. It's gonna ask us first of all to set up a connection. And at this particular point, the connection is where we basically we give it the API key. Um, so it's not something that you store, it's abstracted away from the custom connector itself. Um, so you can have multiple instances of it if you needed to. So we're gonna click on new connection down here. It's gonna pop us out into here so we can uh, uh, copy and paste in the particular API key. Uh, it's a secret value, so it protects us for us on there. Um, and then with that created then, uh, if we give it a second, might just need to refresh it. Yep, there it is on there. Okay, now we can just do a bit of a test. So again, we'll just use our um, text that we've been kicking about already, just to run the test on there. Click on test operation. Okay, great, we get an answer back on there. It's translated our text. Uh, we can also do the same for our detect API. Again, just to make sure that it's all working as we want it to. Click on test operation. And yeah, we get 200 back on there and it's all looking good. So that's it. So our connector is basically built out and ready to go. And now we can start to use it within our particular um, solution if we wanted to. So in today's example, we're just gonna create a, a flow and just show it working in action. Um, the connector could also be used with, with Power Apps, Canvas Power Apps as well if you wanted to. So we're gonna close that down over there. Uh, click on done. We should be able to see our new connectors in our solution like so. And we can just do from here new, um, it'll be new flow. Uh, we're just going to do it as one that we trigger via a button. We're not too concerned about the trigger action on here. Now, if we go into new step down here and click on custom, we can see that we should have a new um, connector on here. Um, I might just need to refresh actually. Just give it, give it a quick refresh. Let's do the search, maybe it's not appeared on there yet. 
Okay, I might not have published. I'm just going to pause the video here two seconds while we try and find out what's going on with it. Okay, we're back, and there seems to have been some issue with creating it inside a solution. So effectively, what I've done is that I downloaded the um, the um, Swagger definition for it by clicking this button down here. You can see it downloads as a JSON file. Then what you can do is basically just do import an open API file, uh, give it a name, uh, select the JSON file that you've just downloaded, import that in, and then now when I navigate across into our instant flows over here, um, uh, add on a new step. If I go to custom over here, I can see there's MB400 sample and there's our two particular APIs on there. Um, so with that all sort of working now, uh, we'll give it a go with our translate API. Um, so in this case, we want to translate our text into French. Uh, and then once again, we're just going to grab on our, uh, our English body text from before. Uh, if I just grab it from over here on the clipboard. So again, it's just one big JSON array like so. Uh, give that a quick save. Okay, uh, click on test, um, continue like so, run the flow, and then we can see that's run successfully. If we then review our outputs down here, we can see, yep, it's taken our text and it's translated that out into French for us, which is really nice. Yeah, so apologies there for the slight hitch in terms of setting it up, but as you can see, um, it's really easy to set up a custom connector, whether it's for your own Azure. Uh, for an existing Azure service or your own APIs, just follow the wizard along, uh, use the Swagger editor where you need to to basically fine tune some of the settings. And then, and then as you can see straight away, once it's created, we can start using it in Power Automate Flow to start doing some really amazing things. So I hope this video has been uh, really helpful in terms of your revision. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel uh, if you want to see more of these videos. Uh, we're gonna be doing more in the series and hopefully similar content in the future. Uh, so it'd be good to have you along for the ride if you need to. Uh, if you've got any questions, then leave a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter as well. Uh, that's about it for me today then. So all it is to say is take care. Thank you.